hour. Okay, so shall we get right into it, Bradshaw? Do you like my new shoes? Yeah, are they Converse? Yeah, they're platform Converse. They remind me of those platform Steve Maddens that like every person in my school had in middle school. Um, anyway, so <laughs> hello everyone, welcome. We do this meeting every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. And Bradshaw and I choose a topic to talk about in the yoga world that is um, either something that we're talking about with our trainees or something that we are experiencing ourselves as yoga teachers. Um, this week we wanted to talk about in-person training versus virtual trainings. And we wanted to just lay out lay out hi alex, alex. We, wanted, <laughs> we wanted to lay out some some differences some things you could expect from each and the good and the bad of both okay so <laughs> all right so i feel like um, what was interesting is John and I got an opportunity to do a training virtually prior to doing one on our on our own. And so I feel like we kind of got to see what we um, like the pros and cons of doing things online. One of the, the main things that I loved is being able to watch content over and over again. Um, I have really bad ADD and often when I'm doing like trainings in person, I'm just so excited. I can't remember anything. Uh, so being able to like watch shorter videos over and over again was made it for me a m much easier to learn in that uh, in that manner. And I also really enjoyed that what we did with our training is like um, we recorded it live. So like there was that in-person element. It wasn't like all recorded, like it was live. And then that live recording was up online. So if someone had a question, it was like, oh God, what, what did they say in the lecture? They could go back and watch that for like weeks on end. And like, you do not get that in a like in-person training. Mm -hmm. Totally. I agree with you that the element, the recorded element to go back and rewatch has been so helpful because these trainings, Traditionally, in the past, before I think uh, now now COVID and pandemic has really like paved a new path for the virtual training platform. But up before then, they were ephemeral events that like you just had to remember <laughs> and be like, oh, did I did he talk about did they talk about this? Did we go over this? Or and if you're not like a diligent note taker a lot of it is lost to memory, essentially. So mm -hmm. having that, the ability to revisit has been really instrumental for me as a student. And then also now leading, having led a training, I see how useful that is, that has been for our trainees. Some of our trainees that already graduated in April are still looking at and revisiting the content. And I'm still getting emails from some of them like I just re watched this lecture and it makes so much more sense right now I like wasn't able to grasp it then and now it's just totally resonating and now I'm teaching and I've got all this experience and I'm able to like use it in a new way and I love hearing that feedback I think that is really valuable for us as facilitators of a program but it's also just um it makes me feel really good about about what we're doing and the potential of this platform. I do want to also say, just from the teacher's perspective, for us, like Bradshaw and I ran a program this May where students weren't coming live. And so we had the opportunity to start and stop these lectures and record them and make them for video. And in a way, having that ability was really amazing for like controlling the flow of of the lecture and being super prepared like everything that we said was thought out and articulated and like designed the way we wanted it to be and um with the live element to our zooms that we were doing like there are moments where just as it would be in person you could have someone ask a question that like sidetracks and, and kind of derails the conversation. So being able to like 
control the flow of the video production is also really useful for, for streamline, streamlining the content. There's another thing that I think that's really beneficial to both teachers and to students is when you have things online, you can do stuff anywhere. So it's like you meet people that you normally wouldn't meet that like maybe can't afford to come to the city for a training or they don't have the time off work or whatever it may be. Um, so having that element to just being able to do the training at your house, mm -hmm. it like, you know, the upper, it's, it's, it's way more like, it's like, Ooh, I don't have to pay for food and for stay. Like all that stuff gets really expensive when you're doing trainings, really expensive. If you're totally. in the place that you're training. Um, and then also we as teachers get to meet people that probably like there are people in uh, other people in the Midwest that were not from Chicago that took our training that wouldn't have done it if it was live. And so like we meet more people, they meet more people. And I feel like yoga is so much about, a com about community. So that's a really beautiful element um, about the kind of online platform is I do think it gives you more access to, to meeting people in the world of yoga. Totally. And I think it's funny you say that because I, in this, from the student's perspective, a lot of the emails prior to registering for our first 200 hour were about that community aspect of like, will we still get to know other people or how will you create that community in this platform, in the virtual platform? And I have to say, first of all, we loved, we loved doing the breakout rooms, but there is something so uh, intimate about being with one group of people for an extended period of time, whether you're in person or virtual, I'm pretty sure that all of our students got to know each other on a really nice level and made connections that will um, carry that they will carry on for for hopefully years to come. But as Rasha was saying, like I used to teach in Florida, I have a student base there. And if it weren't for the virtual platform, they wouldn't have been able to join this training. So like kind of opening up access is a really nice perk of virtual trainings. Totally. Um, one other thing that I didn't think about until today, as I was, I knew we were going to talk about this tonight. And I'm like, what are some other advantages of the virtual in terms of the physical practice? And i I might not have realized it during the time as a student, but as I look back on it, I'm like, this was so important for me to do. And, and this, what I mean by this is being able to go at my own pace. Mm -hmm. There's often times in the training where one, it could be information overload, but also when you're in the flow and you're in like a big room of everyone moving, if you're not in the mood to do like a fast paced class, like you have the agency, even though technically you can in person anyway, but I think there's probably more internal social pressure to just like do what the teacher's trying to teach you. But you have that agency to like take your time on your mat and really get to know your practice and your body in a way that you might not feel comfortable doing in person. And also there's a ton of space, like the training that Bradshaw and I did last year, loved it so much. We experienced it both in person and virtual. And the in-person segments were, the rooms were so crowded. We were mat to mat that like you really couldn't veer off your mat at all. So if you're the type of person that wants to go to a wall for the inversion practice, it wasn't as conducive in that, in that spot, in that, in that scenario. But like at home, I can totally pull that mat to, to my wall and, and use what I need to use. And I could come off my mat for my twist and not worry about having, you know, my hand on someone else's mat or whatever that may be, especially in these heightened times of like wanting to keep distance. Maybe if, if, if that's a concern it doesn't have to be in the virtual realm so do some time at home to, for self-exploration like you may be more willing to explore your physical practice or your meditation a little more um in the safe space of your home i mean mm -hmm. i and this is not to say that i don't think all spaces that you practice yoga should be safe it's just that you may be willing to try something a little different when no one's there <laughs> totally even though 
we like as yoga teachers i think we're told to like oh do it feels good and like take your time there's still when you're in the training scenario there's still a mindset or at least there was for me that even though this might not be something i do in my everyday practice because i don't want to do it um it's something i should do during the training because i'm here to learn this thing and so maybe you might feel a little bit more pressured without even knowing that you're pressured to do yes. that thing than you yeah. would at home and um yeah i think it's really important to for your own self-study to have that ability to decide to choose um yeah so i think we just named a ton of things that are really positive about the virtual realm and i think we should name things that come to mind that might be not as positive and then we'll talk about in person um wait bradshaw your audio i don't hear you bradshaw i don't hear you i don't hear you i can't hear I don't hear you. I don't hear you. This happens every time. Can you leave and come back? You gotta leave and come back. Can't hear. Your audio cut out. Yeah. So while Bradshaw leaves and comes back, because I'm really interested to know. Don't hear you. <laughs> We're just gonna sign to each other. Okay, so <laughs> while Bradshaw leaves and comes back, because he will be back in a moment, one of the things that comes to my mind that is not an element, or that's an element that I miss for the in-person is the energy of a room. Let's see, Bradshaw's hopping on. Oh, Bradshaw, how do I get you on? Okay, I here we go. I hear you. So, so what were you saying? Oh, I was saying like something, it's not that it's, um, I don't want to be like, it's bad. It's just that I, like, I sometimes miss having just like in-person connection. You know what I mean? And like seeing someone be like, oh my God, you're actually there in real life. <laughs> like that is something that you can miss. I totally get that. You know? Yeah. I was just saying, as we were waiting for you to hop on is like the thing that comes to my mind, the mind the most is just the energy of the room. Yeah. That is something that even after doing my 200 hour training, even having a home practice that I felt like was really strong, I would still come and attend group classes regularly just for the energy of a room. So oh. I, I think that is a really great one. Um, the other little thing that I would say um, could be just Zoom fatigue. I think that's been real for everyone in this last year. Much. Yeah. Yeah. So like a little bit of Zoom fatigue. Bradshaw and I are playing with this go at your own pace format. And I, we're hoping that that remedies a bit of the Zoom fatigue. So there's not as much pressure on being at every single thing live, but you'll still have access to it and access to us. So, you know, we're doing our best as a yoga school to work with that format. But yeah, as things start to open back up, we're really interested in this conversation because I think both of us are surprised at how much we loved about the virtual format. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, I think it will change moving forward. I know our teacher, Jason Crandall, always says there's very rarely a time in life where a technology is introduced and then taken away. So mm -hmm. moving well, I forward, yeah. I think that, you know, not just our industry, but for all industries, this has just shown us a different way of doing things. Um, and it's not the be all end all, but like there are laws, a lot of positive things about it. And so I, I agree with you. I don't think that it's ever going to go away. I think that like everything and like every um, modality, things evolve, things change, and we learn and grow with the time. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then just that brings us to talking about in-person trainings. I think we can both name a bunch of like pros and cons of in-person trainings as well. So definitely on the pro side of things, we just talked about that energy of the room will be high up there. Um, just being around people in a community, maybe especially this last year when we like want to be with people again. 
Um, but there's also a lot of things for me personally that I didn't love. And that's just like sitting on your yoga mat, listening to lectures. Oh God, yeah, my back would kill me. You're not like sitting in a classroom or sitting in a yoga studio on the floor. Yeah, you're sitting on the floor, packed like sardines sometimes. It's usually, it's usually so hot. It's usually so it's <laughs> it's usually so hot, so sweaty. And then like, if you're taking a training that's really packed, there's a ton of people, you're mat to mat. And then there's that, there's that's always that. Like at an in-person training half, halfway through. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Bradshaw looks like on his mat. Um, but yeah, it's uncomfortable. Like people don't realize how uncomfortable it can be during 200 hours because they're like, oh, you're, do you're taking care of yourself. You're doing so much yoga, you must be, you know, you must be really feeling great. And I'm like, my back has never hurt so much in my life. I'm sore. I'm tired. I feel like I need a chiropractor. Um, and it's just like shifting from one side to the next side to like your belly to your back to your side to like try to find a position where you can also take notes and like listen for a long time. Well, that's the um, thing. That's the ADD. I mean, like sitting for that long and having to pay attention. Yeah, because these are full I, days. These are full days, everyone. Like most trainings are like your 6 a.m. to like 4 p.m. full day affairs. You're literally like halfway through, you'll like, like I've literally had days where like they'll be lecturing for three hours and I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> and it, it depends where um, you do it. It depends where you do it because like I've experienced Bradshaw's as a classmate in San Francisco and like, he's not lying. He does have ADD. <laughs> and like there'll be times where like just Bradshaw's phone comes out and like, yeah, like you can see that it's just too much. And, and you're like at certain points checking out, but then there's other, like the other trainings I've done where we don't have internet or Wi-Fi or like, like when I was in Costa Rica and did that training, I was like, okay, I'm trapped in this room. And I, ha I like I'm forced, <laughs> I'm forced to listen, <laughs> which was really good for me. But also, again, it's that fatigue of and discomfort. Totally. Um, yeah, and then also, like Bradshaw said, if you're not doing this locally, if you're going somewhere to train with someone, that Except might mean time off work. That might mean time tra uh, to more money spent on travel and food and housing and all of that. So it can be a lot more expensive. And a lot of these trainings, at least um, nationally, are at, in cities, you know what I mean? They're like, it's like they're hubs. So uh, not all the time, but I feel like a lot of the time. And so that, you know, going to big cities in this country can be expensive to stay in. Yeah, and let's just say you're not traveling to, you're doing this at your local corner yoga studio. Mm. They have a brick and mortar, so they have to pay rent, which Probably. means the so. training's gonna be more expensive than a full on virtual training mm -hmm. because of that too. So you have to, you have to weigh out your options. Totally, totally. Yeah, so, in summary, <laughs> there are perks to both. We love both. We've done both as both students and teachers now. And I think in the future, there will be some hybrid scenario. And just to talk a little bit about Kaya's for this time, this training that we're running in August and September, it's going to be fully virtual. But for people who are local, I know Bradshaw talked about this last night, we are giving access to in-person classes in our park classes. So you can have FaceTime with us. You can ask us questions. We can get to see and really get to know your practice. And so it's there if you want it, but also it doesn't take away from that 200 hours and you still will be able to learn everything, digest all the content and go at your own pace if you wanna go at your own pace and so on. And I think Maybe pretty soon, we will announce future training models that we're really excited about that we're working on now. So I'll leave you with a cliffhanger. <laughs> Season two coming soon. Yeah. Do you have any last words, Bradshaw? 
Um, if anyone has any questions about our virtual training and kind of like how we're making it a hybrid, like Gianna just talked about, just reach out to us and we'd be more than willing to talk to you. And we hope that you have a great Wednesday night and we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Have a good one, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.